Reddit, what is your spookiest or most unexplainable event that has ever happened to you? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. I live in the apartment at my mom's house and lately I've been seeing the same person with white pajamas like clothes on. Never seen their face and not sure about gender. The first time was when I walked past the hallway and saw them standing in the master bedroom doorway out of the corner of my eye. When I looked, there was nothing, but there was a white jacket hanging on a closet door, so I just assumed my mind was playing tricks on me. The second time was when I was outside by the pool and saw them standing in the master bedroom through the sliding glass door. They then walked towards the bed where my two-year-old sister was sleeping. And when I went to check, there was nothing. The third time was when we had a power outage and I was alone at home. I decided to take a nap in some shade outside by the pool. I got this eerie feeling someone was looking at me in my dream and woke up. When I opened my eyes, they were standing right next to me, and shortly after vanished again. The last time was yesterday. I was putting up fencing on our gate so my puppy can walk and play freely outside in the backyard. One of the gates are in this long narrow passage that goes from the backyard to the front yard next to the master bedroom. As I was working, I again got this eerie feeling someone was looking at me. I turned around, and there they stood at the end of the passage, and shortly after vanished again. Almost every time I took it as my mind was playing tricks on me. The first time I thought I mistook the jacket for a person. The second I thought it might have been a reflection on the glass. The third I thought my mind was playing tricks on me because of the dream. But the fourth time, I don't know why, but that one really freaked me out, so I told my mom about what I saw. She then told me that she saw a person in white clothing several mornings in the driveway when she drove to work, but stopped seeing them around the time I saw them the first time. Usually, I don't believe in this kind of thing. But I can't explain how my mom stopped seeing them in the driveway and I then started seeing them near the master bedroom. This story is from a childhood friend who told me this and it still unnerves me to this day. She was genuinely freaked out and her family even backed up her claims, so here goes. Basically, my friend and her family moved into this rental property which my friend said was haunted. It gave everyone an off feeling, those who visited or stayed over would mention it. I myself experienced this odd feeling of foreboding whenever I went over there and believed in the consensus that the house was haunted. It honestly felt oppressive in the house and you would feel this pitiful dread that is hard to compute into words and was extremely uncomfortable to experience to say the least. Anyway this particular explicable event was enough for my friend's family to pack up and stay with relatives until they moved out permanently. On this fateful afternoon, my friend had arrived back home from the park and heard an argument taking place in the kitchen between her mom and dad. My friend thought this was odd as both her parents should be at work, so she called out, Mom? before unlocking the front door and going inside. My friend said the house fell instantly silent, an uncanny silence like all the air had been sucked out of the place and felt stifling and wrong. Then her mum said, hey friend's name, we are just in here. My friend was just outside the closed kitchen door at this point and froze beyond opening. It was her mother's voice, but there was something off like the cadence was missing that made it her mother. It sounded flat and unnatural. My friend decided to bolt back out the front door and wait outside until her brother come home, but she said as she turned back to the house she saw her mother peering at her from the lounge room window, but it wasn't her mother. The face was the same, everything was the same, but her face was devoid of anything that made it her mother. There was no recognition on her mother's face, there was no indication that she was looking directly at her daughter, there was no emotion in the expression, nothing. The eyes looked unstaring and utterly blank. My friend screamed and ran down the street to her mother's work and confirmed that she was there all this time and had never been home. Initially my friend's mother reasoned that someone must have broke in, but a later investigation proved nothing had been stolen and the back door was locked as was the front door when my friend came home. No one could rationalize who my friend saw in the window and why it looked so much like her mother, but not fully human, so that was the deciding factor to nope the hell out of there and find somewhere else to live. The landlord of the house denied anything like this happening when they lived there, but did admit tenants didn't stay long saying there is something was wrong in the house. 
My friend also told me she was the only one who actually saw anything definitively sinister in the house, but her family said they definitely felt an evil presence there which manifested into the doppelganger experience my friend had. Utterly terrifying. I was camping with my wife sitting around the campfire. Started to pour rain, so we went back inside the tent. Inside the tent the rain was so heavy, we couldn't hear anything over the pitter patter hitting the tent. We decide to change our clothes and call it a night. We get into our sleeping bags and turn out the light and hear, bleat bleat bleat, again bleat bleat bleat, like the sound Motorola phone would make when the battery was dying. Only thing was we don't have phones that make that sound and our phones are turned off. Miles from anyone, pouring rain, can't hear if someone is walking up to your tent, can't tell if someone walked away from your tent. We were trapped inside this canvas death trap with only one exit. We froze and waited for what seemed like hours. Eventually, I grabbed my gun and light and made a dash for the door trying to get out as fast as I could. Once out, I ran around my tent. Nothing, no one, not a sign of life anywhere. We grabbed our R valuables and decided to make the 10 minute trek to our car. We made it safe, drove an hour home, and slept better than we would have if we stayed. The next day, we drove back to get our stuff. When we got to our tent, it didn't look like anything had been messed with, nothing out of place. Once we got home and unpacked my wife couldn't find her underwear, none of them. Literally nothing else was missing from our stuff. It was the wildest and creepiest experience of our life. Growing up, I would travel across the country to spend time with my grandma in the Pacific Northwest. Towards the end of her life, my uncle and his family pushed to have her declared incompetent, thinking that they could control her finances, she was a wealthy woman. I don't know exactly how long it went on, but I know strange things started happening to her. For example, she would have a doctor's appointment, and a mail would call and cancel it. She'd show up, the doctor's office would be like, what the heck? She would wake up to every drawer in her house open and everything in them dumped onto the floor, strange thing like that. We thought it was our uncle trying to make her look incompetent. My uncle died in a car accident, but the strange stuff continued. We thought it might be my cousin. My grandmother died while traveling abroad, my mother inherited her house. The strange occurrences continued. My mother would travel back and forth every few weeks, and she'd do stuff like wash all her bedding and blankets before leaving town. She'd come back a couple weeks later to discover them with seemingly human throw up all over them. She had some painters working in the house, and they ate lunch outside at their vehicles in the driveway. When they came back in, they found the stove's burners in the kitchens aflame. We thought it might be my cousin, who expected to inherit the house, trying to burn the place down. One day, my mother flew back to the town I grew up in, and the next day, her accountant called her very worried. The news was saying a woman around her age was found murdered on her street. Probate was still pending and he was worried my cousin might have tried to have her killed. It turned out that it was the woman next door. Someone had beaten her, piled clothes on her, and set her aflame. She liked her alcohol and cigarettes, so they had staged it to look like she was drinking in bed and smoking and accidentally started a fire. They probably would have thought it was an accident, except someone was driving by and saw the smoke. When they went around back, they found that the glass in the door had been cut. She had also stopped smoking about six months before her murder. My mother started to feel uneasy about going back, so I offer to accompany her. We arrive, I walk around the house assessing security. The first thing I notice is that a side fence between the houses has been broken, like someone tried to climb over it, but weighed too much for how it was secured. Beyond the fence is a patio with three doors. I go up to the patio, and I notice prying marks on one of the doors leading into the garage. My mother had a tenant on the property, so the garage was common space and the rest of the house was secured from it. I go into the garage, and I notice a way into an unfinished attic. I start walking around the house, discovering another way into the attic from within the house. I start to become concerned. I go around to all the doors in the house, discovering that someone has jammed paper towels into the locking mechanisms to prevent doors on various balconies from locking. You could just push them open from the outside. The murderer has never been caught. Someone tried to burn the crime scene down again. Some years later, word in the neighborhood is that a handyman discovered the murder weapon on the property, covered in dry blood. I won't go into detail here about it, 
because it's still an active murder investigation. This happened about 12 years ago. I lived on the first floor of a two-story building which had all kinds of weird ghostly crap going on. My crazy landlord had bought heaps of random crap at estate sales and such and was hoarding it in the basement, which I never went in because it gave me the creeps. I think all the dead people's junk is why the place was haunted as hell, but this is my best story. I lived here alone for a year before my boyfriend moved in. We had no pets, and no kids. I told him a few stories and he was skeptical, at best. We shared a king bed, but had separate covers. I had recurring nightmares about a boy, maybe two years old, blonde bowl cut hair, denim overalls but no shirt under and no shoes on him. He would stand on my side of the bed and stare at me, watching me sleep. I'd wake up in a panic and he would vanish. One night, I fell asleep with my feet out of the covers, boyfriend was sleeping next to me. I feel a very gentle pressure on my left big toe, right where it joins the rest of my foot. I was awake, but absolutely freaked out. It lasted a few minutes and stopped. Eventually, I fell back asleep. Over the next month, this happened a few more times, on different feet here and there. I didn't tell my boyfriend, worried he might laugh at me or think I was crazy. Next time it happened, it went on for a good 15 minutes, and I never had the nerve to look down and see what the hell was holding my foot. I closed my eyes and whispered, hey, please let go of my toe? And slowly, the pressure left and I went back to sleep. I sucked up the courage and told my boyfriend the next day. He didn't laugh or call me crazy. He shrugged and said, okay, I know about your nightmares and something is going on. Next time it happens, wake me up and I will look down for you. Okay great, so a week or two went by with no foot touching, I hoped it was over. Nope, I felt it again. I tapped my boyfriend and he opened his eyes. He was awake. I said, boo, he's got my foot, look down for me? Boyfriend nodded, but didn't look down. He just stared at me and whispered back, I feel him too, and I'm not looking either. From then on, he believed me when crazy stuff happened in that apartment. I was alone in a semi-expensive hotel room somewhere in the far east. I had gone to bed, fully awake still. Then I began to hear light tapping coming from the door. Tap, tap, it was like someone tapped the door a few times with their finger. I didn't think anything of it, hotels have all sorts of noises. I remember that it was about 30 seconds between the sequences of few taps. Slowly the tapping started to move from the door towards my bed though. The tapping started to sound like it was coming from the cabinets next to the door. Each tap came a little bit closer. At this point, I started to be a little concerned. I turned the lights on and the tapping stopped. Waited a few minutes, decided that it was nothing, and turned the lights off. Even with the lights off though, the room was lit enough that I could see. There was nothing where the tapping had been coming from. The tapping resumed, in about 30 seconds intervals, tap, tap, coming closer. Suddenly, the tapping was coming from the bed, right next to my feet. I could feel the tapping this time. It felt and sounded exactly like water was dripping from the roof, dropping on the bed. Tap tap tap, this time, there were no intervals, it was just sealess rhythmic tapping. I was freaking out now, I couldn't figure out anything that caused this. I turned the lights on, I could reach the switch lying in the bed, and something ran away from next to my bed back to the door. There was nothing to be seen, but the footsteps sounded like a child's who was unnaturally fast. The interval between the steps was very short, I'd say about a little longer than that of a rat's, but the weight of the steps was that of a small child. I could hear where it was as it was running, but my eyes saw nothing there. I figured that I won't bother to leave the room, as creepy as it was. I wrote a note on the small notepad hotel rooms often have just in case this thing was worse than I gave it credit for. I don't know if hotel room ghosts have a murderous tendency or not. I kept the lights on for about half an hour and then decided to try to sleep, I turned them off. About five minutes later, the tapping resumed on my bed. I turned the lights on, it stopped. Lights off, a few minutes, it resumed, the same spot. It was like a clockwork, I repeated this about five times or so. I slept the rest of the night lights on. To this day, I have no idea what it could have been. Can't say I believe in ghosts, but that experience at the latest has opened me up to the possibility. 
Never before or since have I had paranormal experiences like this. The three-story house that I grew up in was built in 1965. My parents purchased the home in 1997 right before I started first grade. My parents, sister, and I lived upstairs while my grandma lived on the second floor by herself. My grandma would babysit me while my parents were at work so she would walk upstairs at least twice a day to check on me. My grandma would always wear these slippers that were very heavy, so it was easy to hear her footsteps even from downstairs. It must have been a Saturday or Sunday since I did not have school. I was by myself upstairs, alone in my room, playing with my Game Boy sitting with my back facing my bedroom door. I heard the unmistakable sound of my grandma walking up the stairs to check on me. I heard her proceed up the stairs, walk down the hallway, and stop in front of my door. I felt like she was about to say something, so I looked over to meet her gaze, but there was no one standing there. I instantly felt startled and ran out of my room to check the hallway and stairs. No one else was upstairs besides me. I found my grandma downstairs sitting on the couch watching television. This happened when I was in high school in southern Michigan, probably 2003 to 2004. I had spent the evening with my girlfriend at her house and was driving home late, between 11 p.m. and midnight. My car was low on gas, and the gas station in the nearby village was already closed, so I decided to go a little out of the way to a 24 truck stop or gas station along the highway to fill up the tank. Usually, I would follow the direct route back to my family's house, out in the countryside, from the village, but it's easier to take an alternate route back from this truck stop, so that's what I decided to do. This was a pitch black night, probably a new moon or heavily overcast. I was driving down this country road and approaching a T-intersection indicated by a large yellow yield sign on the right side of the road. People see these road signs every day, so everyone has a pretty good idea about how big and tall they are, about a yard wide and 7 to 8 feet off the ground. As I got closer to the sign, I saw a large low dark shape dash across the road from left to right just out of the range of my headlights. Naturally, I slowed down, being used to seeing deer on the road but it quickly became clear that this thing was no animal I'd ever seen before. Once it had reached the right side of the road, it reared up and stood on its hind legs right in front of the yield sign, almost completely obscuring the sign itself. It was covered in jet black hair, so dark that I couldn't make out any details except the broad shoulders and reflective pale eyes. Safe to say, I noped right the hell out of there as fast as I could. Whatever it was, I hope I never see it again. It gives me chills to this day when I recall the event, and I really try not to think about it when I have to leave my car to open the gate at the end of my family's driveway, or when I sometimes have to help tend to the horses late in the evening. This happened to me in the past month. For background, I work in a retirement home doing activities. On this day, I was filling in at the healthcare center, which is basically hospice. I was in the day room reading stories with one of the ladies. She suddenly asked me who that woman was, while looked like she was pointing across the room. I don't know, but I'd be happy to ask her so we can find out. I thought she was talking about one of the CNAs who was sitting across the room. No, the woman right next to you, on your left. There was no one sitting next to me. She continued, she looks just like you, but her hair is longer. She says she doesn't have a name, but she's very nice. I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end, and I must have been giving her a look. Did I say something wrong? No no, nothing's wrong. I made a quick excuse to leave, and practically ran back to my memory care unit. Now here's what shook me up. I was supposed to be an identical twin, but my twin died while we were still in the womb, leaving only me. This is not information I share with the people I work with. One of the CNAs knew from looking at me that something had happened and wanted to know what it was. She was equally horrified when I told her the story. One of my jobs when I was young was at a Coney Island style restaurant in my city. The restaurant was open 24 six. We closed at 3 AM Sunday morning, reopened at 6 AM Monday morning, but stayed open all the time the rest of the week. This particular thing happened at about 2.30 AM on a Friday. I was the only waitress on shift and the owner was in the kitchen cooking, we were the only two people there. At the time, we had a regular I'll call Jerry. Jerry was a bar fly and a senior citizen. 
He would come in every night after the bar closed, he would have coffee, two eggs over easy, and wheat toast. He ordered the same thing every time and every time his total came to $4.37. He'd give me $6 and tell me to keep the change. So as I'm rolling silverware and waiting for our old pal Jerry, I see a few emergency vehicles go down the main street towards the bar, lights and sirens on. About a minute later, Jerry comes in, I get him coffee and ask him if he knows what's going on. He just shook his head no, so I told my boss Jerry was there and my boss waved at him through the kitchen window and within 3 minutes Jerry's order was up. He's sitting at the counter, and after a little while, he slaps down some money and says, keep the change honey, like he usually did and walks out. I went over to cash out the check and the food hadn't been touched, neither had the coffee, and there was a $100 bill on the counter. I was a teen mom and perpetually broke, so that much money was basically life changing at the time. I saw in the paper on Sunday that Jerry had been involved in a fight at the bar that night and had been fatally injured. L live in an apartment opposite a park in Japan. On the other side of the park was a convenience store and the quickest way to the store was directly through the park. The park was pretty bare, had a baseball field a playground and a path leading through it with some mounds, some small plants and thin trees, not the most beautiful place. One summer evening, I'm heading to the store to get some cigarettes and I notice a lady standing to the side of the path just staring at some houses. I get closer and I greet her with a good evening in Japanese. She doesn't say anything back, but I think nothing of it as she's probably afraid of a foreign man alone in the park at night. She's about 5 meters off the path just standing there still. I look at her as I pass and she had this distressed look on her face, still intently staring at the houses across the street. I didn't really know what to do, I looked at the houses then back to her then decided to just mind my own business and push on. I took about 5 to 10 more steps then came to halt, something wasn't right, everything about her just seemed off. I turned around and she was gone. There were no trees thick enough to hide behind, no bushes or large rocks to hide behind, no buildings, no bins, had she ran there wasn't enough time to be out of my sight. I also would have heard her running on a gravel or dirt path. She vanished in the space of seconds. I walked around for a few minutes looking for her thinking it was a prank but she was nowhere to be found. The whole atmosphere of that park changed for a moment. The air felt heavy and I felt like I was being watched. I pressed onto the store and took the long route home. About three months later, I was smoking on my balcony one night when I saw her again, same part of the park, same stance, staring at the same house. And again, she disappeared in an instant when I took my eyes off her.